Hi, welcome to another endorsement interview with the Times Editorial Board. Today we have Eldon Strong, a Republican who's a candidate for Lake County Council in the 7th District. Um, I'm Doug Ross, editorial page editor at the Times. Also in the room with us, we have Bob Heiss, editor, and Brian Vernellis, videographer. Um, Eldon, welcome. And why don't you give us uh, just a short description of you know who you are and, and what prepared you for this? Thank you, Doug. Um, well, what prepared me for this is a, a life of uh, public service. I served 35 years on the Crown Point Police Department. I retired a couple of years ago. Uh, my entire life has been dedicated to public service. Um, early 2000s, late 90s, I got involved with township government. I served on the Center Township Advisory Board. I then ran for trustee and I served as trustee for a period of 10 years. And two years ago, I filled a vacancy on the Lake County Council representing the 7th District and now here I am running for re-election. Okay. Um, the council's had a, a lot on its plate including the uh, um, uh, a number of cutbacks but also the implementation of a new income tax. Uh, the people are feeling it, you know, probably they will when they uh, file their tax returns uh, next year. So why don't you address, you know, how that money should be used and, and what you see as that for the future of uh, Lake County? Well, uh, Doug, I, I don't think it's not a big secret. I oppose the income tax. I voted against it. Uh, but of the one and a half percent, one percent of it is do dedicated, rather, to public safety, uh, courts, jail, sheriff department. Uh, the other half percent, a quarter of that was dedicated to property tax relief. I'm sure some uh, the folks that got their tax bills this year have seen a reduction in the county portion of their tax bills. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's uh, I would love to see more money being used for infrastructure, roads, bridges. You know, I represent the seventh district and uh, which is very rural, southern half of the county, pretty much everything from 101st Avenue south uh, down to the river, Porter County line to the Illinois state line. It's a really large district. And we've got a lot of roads, we've got a lot of bridges, we've got a lot of drainage issues. I would always like to see more money used in my district to represent those three things, which are very, very important to me. However, uh, it is county government and we must proceed further. I still have believed that we need to uh, close some of the satellite offices in the county. I think it'll benefit the county better, but that's just my plan. And uh, I have talked with my colleagues about it. Uh, but the important thing is that we're here to represent the people in Lake County. Okay. So if you close the satellite offices, uh, where do you put those functions? I mean, do you need to put extra space in Crown Point? Or? We would probably have to put extra space in Crown Point, and like everything else with gross, there may be some cost in the beginning, but in the end, there's going to be a big savings. Uh, we are the county seat in Crown Point. Yes, we may have to expand the courts. I don't want to see anybody lose their jobs. I think we can reduce employment by attrition, and, but I think in the end, uh, Lake County would save millions. Okay, and, and by attrition you're uh, looking at which types of jobs? All the jobs that are currently okay. at the satellite offices. You know, as I said, I don't want to see anybody get fired. I don't want to see anybody lose their job, but if we froze employment and then began to reduce employment by attrition methods, we would be much better off financially, I believe. Okay, and that was one of the recommendations of the uh, uh, Good Government Initiative years ago. Uh, have you studied that report? I have read it. Okay, and are there any other areas that you're looking at implementing? Well, I, I believe uh, uh, my recommendation, my five-step plan a couple of years ago was, uh, as I said, to institute uh, a hiring freeze, no additional employment at this, employees at this time. I believe we need to start doing cross-training for employees so we can reduce part-time cost. We can um, have employees help other offices, which will save money. Um, there are some, a number of steps that I have talked with my colleagues about, and we're still working towards them. We're still working, I guess, across the aisle, as you want to say, to work together, but we're still working towards these goals. 
Okay, okay. Um, one of the other things, if you close the satellite offices, um, with the public transportation the way it is, makes it more difficult for some of them to uh, get to Crown Point. So how do you address the public transportation? 20 years ago, it was a different scenario. Uh, we, we didn't have the capabilities of doing things that we can do now online. Um, it may be necessary, perhaps, uh, for people to have to come to the government center. You know, I'm thinking things like paying their tax bills. They can do this online. If, if necessary, they, we could probably find a, a, an office for a couple of weeks during the tax times. I don't believe that would be necessary, but that's something we could always discuss. But we didn't have the communication. We didn't have the, uh, the availability of things that we had 20 years ago that we, that we have now. And that's one of the reasons I think we can close the satellite offices. We don't need them like we did 20 years ago. Okay. Um, what do you um, see as the county's most pressing need? Yeah, well, for me personally, it's always infrastructure. You know, we've got a lot of roads. We've got a lot of bridges. Um, we have to contain our cost, our expenses. Uh, those are all very important things on my agenda and always a priority for me. Okay, and the, some of the bridges uh, that are being worked on um, are involving uh, community shares. I guess if I remember right now, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding was like, for instance, uh, with Columbia Northcott, the little cow bridges that uh, uh, posed a problem because they were too, you know, not high enough for the new levees. Um, some of the communities are sharing in the cost, but that's primarily a county responsibility, correct? Yeah, county has, uh, I, I want to say off the top of my head, close to 80 bridges in the unincorporated areas that we're responsible for. Uh, some of them, they're still safe, but, but they need to have some needs addressed now before it gets too late. And then roads. Ro roads are always a priority. I could take you down South County and you take a ride down some of these roads, you're going to loosen your teeth. I've been there. Exactly. I've done there, that. Some of them are pretty exactly. uncomfortable. Uh, and, and, of course, I would love to see all the roads repaired. We just can't afford that. So it's a, it's a matter of picking and choosing, working with the commissioners, uh, picking and choosing which roads we have to address first. Okay. Um, we should uh, look at the public safety, and, and especially the jail uh, has been the big issue with you know, it seems to um, suck in more and more county dollars to meet federal standards. Yes, sir. Um, what do you do? Well, when it's a federal mandate, when it's a court order, you do it. You know, you don't have a whole lot of choice. You just have to find a way to get it done and accomplish it. We have to finish with this court mandate. We have to get it done so, quite honestly, we can get these guys out of Dodge. We can get them out of here. We, we have to address the needs as we're being instructed to. And, and I believe that we are, and we're very near completion on it. Okay. Uh, Bob? I, I wonder, uh, you know, I always ask candidates what you hear from voters when you talk to them door to door or whatever. Are you hearing the infrastructure? What, what are you hearing uh, and mostly? In my district, Bob, I hear a lot on roads, you know, the, the roads, their, their issues. And I understand that. That's their public transportation, their roads down there. And, and that's their big concern. And, and, and I talk with them and, and I explain to them that we're doing all that we can, as much as we can, because it's very expensive. I mean, a road is, is close to $400,000, uh, I want to say a chip and seal um, for a mile, I think. It's very expensive, very costly. Do you think they'd pay more if, if there's a higher gas t tax or something at the state level that is put in? Do you think? People are ready to pay more for, for roads. Nobody wants to hear those two words, Bob, higher tax. Nobody wants to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I, I think what we have to do is, is struggle and fight and, and work within our means with what we have got and prioritize. That's what we have to do. Well, one of the things on everybody's mind is jobs. And so, you know, what do you see the county's role in economic development? You know, how, and how well do we do gauge what's been done? I would like to see... Uh, more work generated towards the northern part of the county. Uh, I want to see the expansion of that Gary Airport take off. To me personally, me personally, it just makes total sense to take some of them brown fields up there that we can't do a great deal with, put a couple of feet of con concrete on top of them and land airplanes. That will create jobs. Uh, that will improve 
the, the economic development in that immediate area of that airport, and that will do nothing but benefit the county. Okay. What do you see the county's role in, in economic development? Well, talking with our legislators, our uh, counterparts downstate, both sides of the aisle, trying to uh, persuade them, you know, to listen to us. And, and we must push forward on the Gary Airport. We must revitalize that lakefront. You know, that, that's, our, that's our future, I believe, in our economic development for the county. That's our future. Okay. It's very important for us. Of course, everybody's talking about the uh, RDA is up for reauthorization uh, by the legislature. So I realize you're running for a county office, but would you press for that or? I don't know. Um, RDA, I, I got to give uh, RDA one thing. I got to give them a pat on the back. They're very transparent in everything they do with their funding, and I appreciate that. Uh, I would love to see more things occur down in my district, down in the southern portion of the county, but I got to say, everything they've done up in the northern parts, they've been very transparent, and they've been very open, and, and, and I appreciate that with them. Okay. Um, did you have other questions? Did you ask about the South Shore extensions? Uh, to Doug, I don't know. I'm yet. sorry I came in late. But that seems to me to be potentially an economic driver is the count. Would you it does. Stress it does. The county council to support it that? does. Uh, when we had a vote, honestly, a couple mm -hmm. of months ago on supporting this on the resolution, I voted against it. And I need to explain why I voted against it. I can support the South Shore extent, extension. I get that. I understand that. That would be great economic development for the northern part of the county. But right now, with the needs that we currently have, uh, we're taking millions of dollars and putting it away in a bank when we've got roads that have chuck holes you know, as deep as a coffee can in the southern part of the county. We need to address some of the needs we have now. We need to find a happy median so we can do both. You know, I, I could see the great economic development with the South Shore Extension. I understand that. But we have to take care of ourselves now. It's, it's important. We have to address our needs at the same time. I uh, talked with many of my constituents in the southern part, of, in my district rather, I should say, and I've asked them, how do you feel about the expansion? How do you feel about the, the rail line? Well, I, I don't really, they say they don't really want to see it come down there to them. They would have no problem driving 15, 20 minutes to get on the train to go to Chicago or to go someplace else. So they're, they're kind of indifferent about it coming all the way down to the southern part of the county. Okay, I can support that. Uh, but I do see the importance of it for economic development for the county. I do see that. Okay. Um, what sets you apart from your opponent? Well, I, I, you know, I, I guess you'd have to ask her that question because I hear for me and, you know, I've got the experience. You know, I, I've been involved with public service my entire life. That's been my career. Um, very important to me. I care about people. I'm 61 years old. I've done it, you know, 35 years as a policeman, 12 years I'm sorry, 14 years, township government, now two years uh, as a county councilman. I, I understand I've got the ability to work across the aisle um, with my colleagues, and, and I, I just think I'm the person for the job. Okay. Uh, is there anything we didn't ask that we should have? I guess that's up to you, Doug. <laughs> I'll, answer, <laughs> I'll answer anything you ask. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have uh, uh, with Eldon Strong, the Republican candidate for Lake County Council in District 7. Thank you for viewing. Thank you, Doug.